So I got a big in here. This tree's 30 inches on the butt. From there to there, I just measure it with a tape measure. And we got to drop it down a little bit. So I'm gonna cut it off with the uh, Rotovec saw. My bar's bent a little bit, got a little bow to it. My chain is dull as heck. So this is kind of a worst case scenario. I'm gonna have to work this to get it to cut it. And we'll see how it does. It's gonna take a little effort. The bar is not long enough. I'm, run, I'm actually running a shorter bar on this thing right now than what I can run on it. You can run as long as you want on it, but I got a shorter one on there. It's not gonna pass this stick, so I'm gonna have to roll this stick to cut the other side of it. was actually a lot better than I thought it was gonna be made a good cut on it too let's see what the uh, diameter is if I was running my other bar I could have made that cut but I don't run the other bar because it sticks out I've got this one set to where it's a little bit inside they've actually got a guard that goes on this thing it sticks out about another six more inches you can see like see that cutter right there it's broke off it's all it's that chain's all jacked up so all in all it did pretty good i was surprising i, I didn't figure it would it would cut as good as it did let me pull the tape on and see what it is now 
it should be small enough oh yeah it's got to be under 28 inches we're at 27 right there so we're good that's going to be the longest the widest spot on it there yeah it's 25 that way so we're good they just can't handle those big logs like that at the uh at the mill at millport now if i had a if i had a fresh bar on there this bar right here is bent this way right now i had a fresh bar on there a good chain on it but i have been running this bar for uh, a little over a year now so it's i've done good but i hadn't tore it up but uh let's get over here on this side maybe kevin won't hit me with a tree look out all right here we go there's a sprocket right there on that end you can put that saw on any of your base grapples they're all the manifolds ready for it and uh it just bolts right right to it is all it does that saw runs about the last i know that saw ran about twenty thousand. that's a 404 the 750 runs roughly about ten thousand dollars more so about thirty thousand for the uh, 750 and time you get through plumbing it up and putting everything on it your lines all that stuff like that uh like on mine easily had a little over twenty five thousand in it but i put that thing on 2013 and I've done, I hadn't done anything to it other than put bars and, bars and chains on it. And I don't ever sharpen the chains. I just run them until they quit cutting. I throw them away. Get me another one. Put it on there is what I do. And just just roll with it. Chains, they're, they're, it's not even, no more than they cost. It's not worth trying to, trying to sharpen them in my opinion. I just run them. Because once I've done run them, I've usually broke a bunch of cutters off of them and things like that. And it just, just chunk them. So I'm going to talk about Rotebeck right quick. Rotebeck is uh, the first company that I was a brand ambassador for. It goes way back when I first started filming. Uh, they had a uh, uh, one of their uh, salesmen reached out to me really quick. Run, been running Rotebeck for a long time now. That grapple is a uh, 4552 HD. And currently that grapple right there has over 19,800 hours on it and I'm, as soon as i hit 20,000 i'm gonna really showcase the grapple but it has been on that track loader ever since it was brand new in october of uh 2008 when we got that machine and like i said in the video in 2013 i put the grapple saw on it i'll never have another grapple like that on a loader that i don't go ahead and order a grapple saw to go on it it's uh, very, very handy. I use it all the time. And I beat the chains and, uh, and the bars up on them pretty bad because it's, it's rough on them out there cutting in the stuff that I cut on. But for that thing to be missing cutters and stuff like that, and for it to still cut as well as it did, that was pretty good. <clears throat> the reason why I backed the bar out, I was cut and stopped just a little bit and let it come back out. Anytime you're making a full cut pass like that, whether it's a grapple saw or, you know, a bell tree cutter or even like Kevin on the processor, it's really good to saw into them a little bit and let it run and then stop and let the bar pull back. Because what will happen is that some of those chips will end up getting back in there behind that bar. And if you continue making that cut through it, and all of a sudden you get to a point and you stop, sometimes a bar won't come back out. And so if there's enough stuff packed in there, it'll wedge it in. And then you are screwed then. It takes a little bit to, you have to really work with it. That's really, that's really easy to, uh, to mess up a bar then. So that's the reason why I was running for a little bit and then stopping and letting it, letting it come back out. 
See, here in the southeast, a lot of people in the videos say stuff about the size of our wood and everything. You got to understand that in the southeast, we're not after this. This is the the wood basket of the world. We grow in timber for the entire world right here, and we're growing it fast. We're looking for a 22 to 25, 26 inch stem. That's all we want here is that size tree because that size stem will run wide open through the mill. It's easy to handle. Once it gets to the mill, it runs wide open. So that's the reason why we're looking for that size stem. So I want to talk about Rotobeck right here too, real quick. Uh, Rotobeck is cel celebrating their 45th anniversary right now. How many companies, the people that are in the logging or in the forestry, how many companies do you know of that are still branded under the same name, the same company roof, same everything, hadn't been sold numerous times over the years or anything like that. There's hardly not many. I mean, look at Caterpillar. It's Wilder now. Uh, you know, just uh, Timco. I mean, all that stuff there. Rotebeck is still Rotebeck. Still built in the same place. It started out being built at a lot of the same people. Some of the people have worked there since the very beginning up there. That's a testament, a testament to the quality of what they do. Rotebeck not only builds log handling grapples, they build numerous, numerous, numerous grapples for, and attachments for all sorts of things. Get on Rotebeck's website, scroll around, look. If you have any questions, contact me and I'll hook you up with the people who you need to be hooked up with to talk to to get the information that you need. So happy birthday, Rhoda Beck. Appreciate all y'all. What y'all have done for me for Cotton Top 3, I appreciate it. Uh, everybody up there under all the roofs, I mean, they got <clears throat> uh, St. Justine uh, headquarters and all over, they're all over the place where they build these things at. So, uh, Again, happy birthday, Rhoda Beck. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.